All right, well, I can't leak cape one hand, one hand land on the play, even with a mana mirror. And with the, the, the Tower of Calamities is likely to be a virtual six cards anyway with only one land in hand, so... Um, yes, I would like them all again. All right, keep this. This seems more reasonable. Got the red mana mirror, if it doesn't die. Lots of uh, turn two X ones. I, I really like the uh, the blister stick shaman. It, it, like especially on the play, it can it can set them back. It's a really good uh, tempo play. Even if it, even if it doesn't leave the biggest body behind, it it can probably trade with something. And uh, it's just so often that they're gonna have a two drop. There's less mana mirrors, but there's also all those smiths and. Plenty of X1s for two. I will not mulligan this one. Okay. I probably could have gotten away with one less island, come to think of it. I'm not playing very many blue cards. I have two blue cards. Or did I put in the third, uh, the second, uh, I don't even remember now. <laughs> Put in the second third arc. If I don't draw land and he doesn't play an X one, I'm not playing the shaman. There's just too many X ones. And and the payoff of of an early two one is not very very large. See, so, yeah, I'm just gonna play the especially because if I draw land, I get to play metal crafted chrome steed. It's better than better to set me up for that land, which I hopefully draw than. Uh, to get in for one, I think. Hmm. I may wanna I may wanna tap that down in his upkeep. He drops something big, I don't have well I guess I have tumble magnet to deal with something big. But might prefer that he doesn't. At least for one turn. After that he potentially reaches five mana. And he can drop something big anyway. But here I'd like to limit him to four drops. And and he may not even have that fourth land. I will I will save the rest of the the tokens. Oh, he's got something to do with that mana. Which makes that, <laughs> I guess, slightly less efficient of a play. Or is he just tapping it? Because he can. Looks like he's thinking about playing something. You, you, can't, you can't float it anymore past the upkeep. Uh, in case you draw something that you can do something with the mana with. I always thought that was a bit of a bizarre change. I guess it might be slightly um, counterintuitive for new players, and that's what they did with all those new rules of when you can and cannot float mana. So it's a bit simpler. Just saying, you can never, you can't float mana past any stage. That's that's gonna get. Uh, maybe it won't. Although he. He's digging for, huh? Digging for lands here. Let's see if he drops one. If he doesn't drop one, I might just kill it. Oh, he found one. Okay. Still might just kill it. <coughs> I'm 
Yeah. Kill it. And, uh, swing with my guys. He may have that black kill a 1 1 and turn my metalcraft off. It might suck. I can protect Metalcraft next turn with either the, the Gargoyle or the Slasher, depending on whether or not I draw land. At this point, I have a, I have a, I have a decent amount of power on the table and a decent amount more coming, so I, th I think I don't really want to waste the tumble magnet on his uh, palladium mirror, even though it looks like he's dropping something big. Um, but, like, there's a chance he just drops uh, something for four mana. Ooh, he drops something big. Alright. That. I wish. Now I wish I tapped down the palladium mirror. Um, yeah. Okay, well, I'm not going to use the tumble magnet counter now, especially since he has that extra black. Ah, that stings. That stings. Can I get a corrupted conscience off the top? No. Okay, I'm not playing out the gargoyle here. That'll teach me to not tap down palladium mirrors. <laughs> I don't have too many ways of dealing with the the demon either. Maybe I should have played with the gargoyle to save my speed, but then my gargoyle gets... Uh, ...massacred. I'm gonna let him... I'm not even gonna use a tumble magnet here. Because I'd rather take five or six. And be able to save the Tumble Magnet to maybe push some damage through with the Gargoyle. If I draw land. Okay, he, I'm glad he used that so I can play something out regardless next turn. Without it shrinking. No, that's a little less threatening. That ain't Carnaflex demon. can't even necessarily crush through with the gargoyle if I tap down the demon because he can move his shield. I think I'd rather just take another six here and that way I can drop something else. Interesting. He's attacking with that guy. What could he have? Is he just trying to coax through the six, or think I'm chump blocking? I'm not chump blocking, obviously. But I can't think of anything blue or black that does the extra three. There's, like, the black removal would just kill this anyway. Might be forgetting something, because this is a new set. Pretty sure there's nothing in Scars that punishes me for this block. Interesting. Alright, 
right, well now I have to tap it down every turn, but I think it's I get more value out of tapping it down now. All right, That's a decent draw. Okay, so I, at least I have a hope. I have a hope of racing now, which is then. Then that's why I save these tumble magnets because yeah, now when I tap it down, if he doesn't follow up with anything, I can actually try to try to do something, or a lot more draws will help me race. I am at five life though. Is he going to move the shield? No, he's going to kill my. Guy, that <laughs> lets me race a little worse. I'd probably have this in the bag if I uh, was tapping down that Palladium Mirror, but I, I can't know he's going to drop a Carnaflex Demon, can I? I mean, basically anything else that he can drop for the six mana I can tap down with a Tumble Magnet without. Much worry. Come on, corrupted conscience. Nope. <laughs> um, the swing here makes sense. No, because he regenerates with his shield. I'm forced to regenerate with Lenmir, and he just swings with his slasher. That brings me to one. I don't really have a way of dealing with 11 damage next turn without, or with or without dealing with the Carnivalex Demon. But the, really, the only way I'm winning this is if I can deal with the Carnivalex Demon. So uh, that's what I've got to play for here. I don't. I don't think giving him extra outs by letting him. Swing through for four made made much sense. So here I think it's basically corrupt. Oh, that's another bomb. Yikes! <laughs> that's big. Okay, I drew nothing. Let's try that again. Um, I may want to, after seeing a massive bomb like Carnaflex Demon, uh, I may want to bring in another way of dealing with it. Right now, what can I I can deal with it late with the tower. I can deal with it earlier with a corrupted conscience, and and that's about it. Um, so splashing. Uh, spread the sickness may make some sense. Um, I can play. I can even shift into black <coughs> for flesh allergy, and then play some like ragers or something. The only the only problem with that is that then it becomes harder to play corrupted conscience. And so switching a corrupted conscience for a flesh allergy, even though that would mean I can play two colors. I, I just don't I don't know if I like that idea. Um, so that said, um, is maybe a, a spread sickness, what does it do in terms of proliferating? Not not much. I have a tumble magnet. I think that's it. Um And I don't have many ways in the pool of dealing with the Bone Horde other than the Halt Order, which is reason to maybe not leave blue. Like, there's definitely a, a decent red-black build here, but it, it it's I don't know if it's that much better than the blue one. <coughs> I get nice some nice value cards. Morbid Plunder. I can add in a Nested Ghoul. Even Bleak Coven Vampires is probably decent here. 
that would reduce the number of artifacts I'm playing if I wanted to play all these guys. I, I think I think I'd prefer to just splash and arrest. Well, maybe spread the sickness is better because it doesn't give him the chance to bounce. He is playing blue, right? Okay. Go with the spread the sickness. Cut the Surtark. So I'm, I'm basically just doing this for another way of dealing with his bomb. I should have checked, actually. What's my other mana mirror? That's what I missed. I I feel like one of my mana mirrors is either white or black, and that, that should have pushed me to one or the other, potentially. I think it might be a white one. Uh, oh, that's, that's a bit of a mistake, but I only have so much sideboarding time. Um, uh, would you like to play first? No. Okay. Uh, reasonable hand. No blue mana. And no short term ways of dealing with a Carnaflex demon. I mean, Tower of Calamity is definitely a long term <coughs> way of dealing with it. But it doesn't take too many turns for a Carnaflex demon to win. Especially if he can uh, accelerate into it. I could have, I could burn the Imperial this leg near, but my my deck doesn't have too much removal. I'd rather burn the Imperial. <coughs> his other mirror, if he plays that even if I don't get the extra three. So this guy, I, I will burn. I will burn... Well, this would be burning the pier, I guess, since it's not infect, but... Uh, the spell works either way. So, just go ahead and... I won't show him the black splash yet. Even though I'm going to play... Mana mirror. I can actually get this gargoyle going next turn, and I'm, I'm going to be pretty close to Tower of Calamity's mana. In short order, if my mirrors don't die. Unfortunately, he will be at <coughs> a Carnaflex demon mana first if he has a Carnivalex Demon. Bonehorn. It's a small one for now. That doesn't make it any less threatening of a card. And I and I don't have any ways of dealing with it uh other than uh, Horde Smelter Dragon once it's on the table. So, th th actually, this is kind of interesting. Because um, Galvanizer brings me closer to Tower of Calamities with two mirrors, but um, I think I just dropped the Gargoyle here. And I can... I can drop... Um, Galvanizer plus tower the next turn. The only thing is that that, that that's too if he has a land in Carnaflex Demon, that's too late. Um but I can't since I it would be too late either way, because if I can't drop Galvanizer and Tower this turn. But I'd feel quite good about my chances if I can <coughs> avoid seeing a Carnaflex Demon this turn.
because even without another land, I'm at Tower of Mana with a Galvanizer and two Mana Mirrors. So he didn't draw that fifth land. Cycling for it. <coughs> there it is. So is it going to be Carnaflex even next turn? It won't quite help him yet. So yeah, I think I think here I just dropped the Galvanizer and the Tower, which makes it, him unable to play. Is that correct? Yeah, it makes him unable to play his Carnaflex Demon straight out. Because he can't kill my Mana Mirrors with only one activation, even with another land. So he needs two lands to be able to clear my Galvanizer and, and Leaden Mirrors. And beyond this, I think I just leave that eight mana open. Beyond this turn, and just I can pick off his Plague Mirror if he doesn't drop anything. So he's digging. And by leaving the 8 mana open, I can even... I can kill... Uh, a Carnaflex Demon as it hits play, at least. Although it would do some damage to my board. And <laughs> grow this Bone Horde pretty big. So as interesting as the Shaman is, I think I just want to play around the Carnaflex Demon here. I suppose I still could. If I if I play Shaman, kill Copper Mirror, he's at 7 mana. No, because then if he, if he draws a swamp. My board gets swept. I think here I'm just content eating away at his board. Let me make sure I'm doing the math right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. One to untap the galvanizer and then two more. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that would be terrible if I wasn't developing my board so I can use a Tower of Climates when I don't actually have enough mana. I'll take another poison canner, I'm not excessively worried about that. But that will be the guy I kill if he doesn't play anything out here. Um, can I now go for the throat here? 
with the horde smelter. I think I probably can. Basically, what would happen? He'd have to play out Carnaflex Demon. Now, if he if he plays it out with Huh. He only has one card left in his hand. If it's Carnaflex Demon, and he draws a Swamp, he clears my board, which is a problem, and shrinks my Horde Smelter. <coughs> and then, I guess he'd have to be... he'd have to trade with the Horde Smelter. And I still have some gas left. And maybe that's... I think that, that might be better. Then... So even if he draws the swamp, uh, plus I still have board position even with swamp plus Carnaflex theme in here. Although I suppose no, even like something like Volition Reigns or Corrupted Conscience on my Horde Smelter, I can just Tower of Calamities it. <coughs> so I think I think. Yeah, it made sense to just go for the win next turn in case he doesn't even have the demon. Because I think the, the scenarios were pretty similar. Except in this case I get the Horde Smelter Dragon on the table. Um, okay, let, let's check out that Mana Mirror. Oh no, it was, it was a Leaden Mirror, so that makes more sense for the spread the sickness. I suppose maybe Surtark should actually be in this deck. <laughs> Given all the equipment he has and my lack of removal, it's probably an incorrect cut. Um, what would be a correct cut? One, two, three, four, five, six. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I mean, cutting an artifact and playing a Surtark is not necessarily the right way to go here either. play 16 land. I just don't like 16 land with tower. I have plenty of ways of using my extra mana. Skin wings, one of them. Equipment in general, just moving them around. Well, I guess I don't have that many other ways. Yeah, okay. Let's cut a mountain. Live on the edge a little. <laughs> but uh, I do have three. I do have three mana mirrors. I'm going to be on the play, though, so maybe that should have factored in. Maybe I'd want 17... I should want 17 land on the play. He didn't have too many free ways of I, at least not that I've seen yet, of dealing with my mana mirrors. My mana mirrors have been pretty reliable so far, and okay, I get a, a pretty sweet hand here for the play. Hopefully I get to eat his mana mirror, his infective, infecting uh, mana mirror. It's the only one I've seen so far. I just, I would feel a whole lot more comfortable if I can get an opener that can deal with the Carnaflex Demon, but I guess I have a good number of draws to find one. Just don't have that many, right? It's 
essentially just corrupted conscience and uh, spread the sickness. And there really wasn't, I don't think there was a build. Well, at least there was no build that involved playing Horde Smelter Dragon. That gave me more ways. Well, there's something to Blister, blister Six Shaman. That doesn't seem to fit his deck all that well, to be honest. I guess he has some nice equipment, uh, some living equipment. I mean, he did have a reasonable number of small guys. So here I, I'm just going to kill the uh, signal pest with the uh, shaman. Hmm. Or I can go. I can go aggro here. I mean, is he really going to? He's not going to move the flare husk onto the signal path. And even if he does, I don't really care. That deals with one of his creatures. Um, so I think here I just play Snap Sail Glider <coughs> plus the Axe, which gives me a four power flyer next turn, plus I play the Shaman. That seems seems good. Definitely don't want to see a uh, uh, stupid mirror again. Okay, it's not a mirror. <coughs> Is he out of? Uh, hopefully he's out of. No, I know he has at least the blue uh, spell bomb too. I saw that in game one, I think. Trinket Mage has definitely got a ton better with some of the targets available in uh, Besieged. A couple of equipments. No spell bombs, but there's... I mean, Signal Pass is at least one of the more reasonable one-drop guys to fetch with a Trinket Mage. Which which could be... which and that could be the reason he's playing Signal Pass, actually. Because while it doesn't necessarily fit his deck all that well, uh, if you can, you can having the option of fetching with a trinket mage seems decent. Oh yeah, he has a quarter shield as well. Heh, <laughs> maybe he makes the mistake of attacking with the signal test here. Forgetting I have a flyer. Nope. Alright, uh, so I'm just going to shaman up his signal pest here, and equip up my glider, start swinging. I'd be more than fine trading the Shaman for the Trinket Mage. I'm also more than fine with him equipping up his Trinket Mage. If that's what he's, if that's the best he has for the turn, and that, that is.
Um, question of whether I want to drop the tumble magnet or the the tower here. I actually just think I'm dropping the tower. I don't I don't think there's anything I'm going to want to tumble magnet on his turn, and that's just slightly more efficient use of my uh, mana. I am getting there. I'm getting closer to tower mana. So really there's not too many bad top decks for me. Unless he plays a <laughs> Carnifex Demon next turn. Actually if I draw run runner land I can he can't play Carnifex Demon. Something big. Hmm. Unfortunate that my beats are on. <laughs> Those are beats too, I guess. And they slow down his beats. Although, uh, now I guess I may wish I had that Tumble Magnet in play. No Carniflex Demons, please. Alright, no. No, it doesn't look like there's any sixth mana. I'd feel more comfortable if he played a six man and not a Carniflex Demon, though. <laughs> it's even more comforting to know it's not in his hand. And that I have time to find Tower of Calamity's mana or some other answer. Hmm. That guy could wreak a bit of havoc here. Well. Oh, huh. so can this guy, I suppose. I do definitely wish I had that Tumble Magnet in play, though, over this tower, because then I can tap this guy end of turn. But for now, definitely prefer to play the gargoyle. And he does have to keep three. Three mana is a lot when you only have five in play. And at this one, I'm not necessarily cold to uh, a Carniflex Demon. I can tap it down with Tumble Magnet, and I can break through with these guys. So now now I think I like my position after drawing my gargoyle. And chrome steed. Those are two turns in a row. I think I like where I stand. It's hard for him to play anything here, but I mean, even even if he just taps down something with the animus, <coughs> like the, I guess the best case for him is to find a, another play to go. And oh, ooh, <laughs> that that's okay too, I guess. Um, although it may not be enough here. Um, I have nothing. 
I have nothing other than halt order that deals with the precursor golem. <laughs> I'm glad this is the first time I see it. Uh, I hmm. can potentially... Ooh. How do I play this one now? Um... thing here is that Tumble Magnet doesn't necessarily solve this anatomist. Because he can still put a minus one, minus one, and I don't win. So it's still going to take two turns either way. Actually, it, it's now, if I play, yeah, okay, so this works. So if I play, if I play Skin Wing, I can actually move it to Chrome Steed and have two six power flyers. So tapping one down doesn't work. Okay. So another decent top deck. Unless he can kill me next turn. Which would make me not happy. Six mana to equip, which I have. So in hindsight, it was definitely a mistake to play out the tumble magnet. Although, like it did for that to be a mistake, it needed me to keep top decking gas. So, <laughs> um, I guess the way I did it sort of hedged my bets a little more. Maybe. So. As long as I survive, not, not much helps him here. going to attack and and what can I afford to play around here I do have to be wary of that uh, switch power and toughness card although he might I, okay no he's just going to pass the turn in that case um, I just re-equip the skin wing and say do you have a two mana removal spell I don't think there is one just go to the throat but that doesn't hit artifact creatures. He's thinking of it. He's thinking of having it now. Now that wouldn't make much sense. I'm just trying to think if I'm missing something here that 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 makes me pay. I might as well while he's thinking. Um, two mana. Two mana spells. Blue or black. Or are there any, are there any like, no four or five mana spell either. I can't even think of a combination of two spells here. Uh, oh, I guess a bounce spell. Like the, um, either one of the blue, any of the blue bounce spells here can save him. Disperse, the one that bounces an artifact. Oh, that's an answer to Precursor Golem, isn't it? <coughs> um, the question is, do I, do I just go for it, though? 
man, I, I, I hate that when I have a f an easy choice. I have an easy choice, and then I draw something that changes things. I just don't want to flat out lose. No, okay, I, I screw that. I, I go for it. Let's see what he has. Bounce spell destroys me though. Well, I, it's not, at least it's not game over. At least it's not game over. He still needs a follow up. But I, I, I think, like, I think this is relatively safe. Like, had I not drawn the burning pier, I do this in a heartbeat. Okay, I don't even, like, yeah, sure, if he has a bounce spell, good, but, good for him, but, like, um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, there wouldn't have even been, there wouldn't have even been a decision-making process had I not drawn. Burn the Impure. Come on, just concede. Or take the six. Looks good. Yeah, alright. <laughs> Moment of hesitation there. But uh, I think that's the right play. I think I, I'm like. Uh, especially since. It seemed like there were opportunities to play at least one of the cheaper bounce spells before. Um, maybe not the bounce two for five mana, but I think there were opportunities to bounce something before. Uh, it's I think it's also worth noting he probably swings with the precursor golem if he had the bounce spell. Yeah. Although, like, Chromesteed could block, and he couldn't take me off Metalcraft with the, the bounce spell, but... I, I mean, he, the play probably would have been just bounce Chromesteed, bounce Loom Grid Gargoyle, and swing with the Precursor Golem. Or something like that. Anyway, uh, I'll see you next.